Bonjour and welcome to another episode of ASMR in the best possible timeline. Today's episode is going to be a vlog style voiceover, mostly I think cupped whisper ramble about New Year's practices and the upcoming January 11th portal, which this year is happening on a very auspicious and serendipitous Capricorn new moon. So that is this Thursday. I endeavor to upload this on Tuesday, but internet allowing, so we shall see how that goes. Um, I don't have any Virgo in my chart, but my mom was a Virgo, and I feel like I have a lot of big Virgo energy. I absolutely love January. I love New Year's. I love setting intentions. I love new moons. I love my cute little dog that I'm putting on the bed in this video right now. And, um, yeah, so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about three to five practices that you can do. Some of them are throughout the year. Some, at least one, I think it's just one. And then I say three to five because one of the practices contains three parts, and that's the one that I'm working on in this video. So, uh, if you don't know, 111 uh, is a series of auspicious angel numbers. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I cannot remember the significance of three ones right now. My brain fog has been kind of off the hook because I cannot find anyone in the state to uh, give me um, a new B12 prescription. There's this like weird thing happening in my life where every time I go to a doctor in the state of Arizona, they tell me how terrible the health carrier is and refuse to give me a B12 prescription. Um, so my brain fog has like been off the hook lately. I haven't been able to finish my own sentences sometimes and sometimes I just don't know what we're talking about in a conversation. So if this seems a little extra ADD, that's probably why. Um, let's see, what, <laughs> what am I talking about? Exhibit A. Okay, so uh, I can tell you a little bit about the new moon in Capricorn, though. Capricorn is kind of, a, I feel, like an unfair rap, and we often associate it with, like, almost a pathological work ethic, and maybe um, having really capitalistic uh, values high up in your hierarchy, and that can all be true of Capricorn, but really, at its brightest, most high-functioning form, I feel like Capricorn, big Capricorn energy is like a, a big leadership energy, and it's... Uh, how do I say, like, to, to nail the Capricorn curriculum, it's about an alignment between your work, your reputation, your public persona, what you're giving back to the world, and your potential, your propensities, and your values. And the new moons, of course, are always all about setting intentions, new beginnings, um, and that sort of thing, as opposed to a full moon, which is more about, like, releasing what doesn't serve you. So new moons are more, like, about planting seeds. So this Thursday is a great time to start any of these practices or work on any of them or to start any new intention that you have for your best possible timeline. Uh, the first practice I'm going to tell you about, sorry, I don't know what my ADD, where I went in this video, uh, I swear I'm going to start writing soon, um, but what was I talking about? God, why won't they give me B12? This is ridiculous. Um, okay, yeah, the first, uh, practice that I want to tell you about is the magic jar practice. 
process. So, if you don't know, I recently re uh, released a series of wellness planners, which are available on Amazon. I'll put a link below to the landing page where you can either uh, buy them straight from Amazon. They are more expensive on Amazon because Amazon takes a very significant percentage of the profits. Um, and then they're also available for, to order directly from me soon. There will be an Etsy page too. But I love, love, love these planners. Um, and almost every practice I'm going to talk about relates back to the planners. Um, one planner is for healthy people and it has a lot of positive psychology modalities to rewire your brain for gratitude and positive experiences so that you experience what Sean Archer refers to as the happiness advantage. The happiness advantage is the science that we now have, like brain scans to back up the fact that when you are happy, you think better, faster, doctors are better at diagnosing patients, like grades improve, every measurable thing improves when you're happy, and we so often in our culture put happiness on the other side of a goal, like I'll, the example that he gives, because he was a Harvard grad, is like, I'll get into Harvard, then I'll be happy, I'll graduate from Harvard, then I'll be happy, and we don't realize that if we cultivate joy and happiness first, it will help us in all of those intentions and manifestations in the future. So, I don't remember why I started talking about that. My god, I need B12. This is ridiculous. Um, oh, okay, so the first practice in the planners, uh, and you can, you can just do this in whatever planner you have, uh, every week there's an area to write down, like, your weekly wins, and there's a guidebook that goes along with the planners, and it talks about what a weekly win could be. It might be getting a new job, finishing a project, starting a project, um, you know, going on a fun day, anything that is a positive experience, essentially, could be a weekly win. Now, there's also a place in the planner to write one positive experience for every day that you experience. All of these things come from Archer's TED Talk, which I will try to remember to put in the description box below. It's my very favorite TED Talk. It's called The Happy Secret to Better Work. So, uh, this first practice that I have for you is called a magic jar, and what you do is when you have a really positive experience, you write it down on a piece of paper and you put it in your magic jar, and then at the end of the year, you go through your magic jar and behold what a magical year you had. Um, I really, really, really believe in ruminating on positive experiences. I think this rewires your brain, which for thousands of years evolution has wired us to keep an eye out for the bear or, you know, the danger. Um, and that has served us, but since we are no longer surrounded by tigers and bears and we understand that happy brains make better, wiser choices, rewiring your brain to scan for the positive instead of the negative is such an invaluable tool. I love it so much when I tell you I used to be so, like, I don't want to be here anymore, depressed. Um, shout out to Pepperdine Law School. Uh, and I, I just completely transformed my mind using these practices, one of which is writing down a positive experience every day so you can take that practice and you can do it in whatever planner you have. And even if you don't do it in a planner, when something really good happens, you can put it in your magic jar so that at the end of the year, you can see what a magical year you've had. And I really, really like this practice, especially 
usually because like I love the holidays. I'm a total holiday slut, but I know that a lot of people don't and they can be really, really triggering for a lot of people. And that's what's great about the magic jar because you open it up towards the end of the year during that holiday season, maybe right after. I mean, there's no like, you must open your magic jar on December 29th, you know, whenever, sometime between December and January, open up your magic jar and enjoy a little pick-me-up. So that is the first practice I will give you to start uh, this January 11th or whenever you find this video or feel called to. Um, and that, again, you can do a magic jar, you can write down a daily positive experience, um, like Sean Archer tells you to, uh, in his TED talk. He says that if you write down three things you're grateful for, which there's also a place to do that in my planner, uh, and one positive experience, which I've already said, you can do that in my planner. Um, and you do a couple other things, exercise for 30 minutes a day, even if it's just a walk, uh, meditate for 10 minutes a day, and then I think the last one is sending out an expression of gratitude, so like texting someone, hey, thank you for XYZ, I appreciated it, or sending an email or picking your phone up or writing someone a note, I think you know if you do those things every single day for three weeks, your brain, like they've done these studies in the lab, will change like structurally and functionally and you will be happier and thus empowered by the happiness advantage. You're welcome. I do it again. <laughs> As Maddie and I often joke, just, just out here doing the Lord's work. Um, so yeah, magic year is the first thing, first practice I'd like to recommend to you. The second one that I want to recommend, okay, so if you follow Dr. Joe Dispenza at all, or if you fax with Abraham Hicks or Esther Hicks, they're kind of the same person, um, law of attraction, that kind of thing, then this, all of this is springboarding off of that philosophy, and all of this is in my upcoming book. Uh, the copy of the book that you can get now really just has like a little sneak peek into some of these ideas and then focuses on the planner practices and where they come from and offering a couple like additional modalities beyond the planner. But in the book that, um, the expanded version that I'm editing right now, it talks about how the language of your subconscious is action and emotion, and you can trick your subconscious into believing things that aren't real, and that can become like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? So, for example, I used to know someone who was in the NFL, and they did guided meditations as part of their team's training, and he, he was like, you bet, nobody wins the Super Bowl planning for the worst. He also said, you know, we, um, everybody on the team thinks that they are the best player on the team, and we are trained to believe this, because if we believe that, we will play better. So, if you practice visualization, you can uh, Joe Dispenza would say, Esther Hicks would say, you change your vibrational frequency, and as you change your vibrational frequency, it will change the way that you interact with the world and the choices that you make, and, uh, that can have a really positive impact on, um, on the actions that you take and the ultimate outcome that becomes manifest from those outcomes. Let me know what you think of this, like, mic-brushing creative choice that I'm embarking in right now.
right now to cover up the fact that an airplane is flying overhead. It was that. Did that work? Did you hate it? Did you love it? I would love to know. Okay, so piggybacking off of all of those philosophies, we have this practice of writing yourself a letter in past tense. So, in my book, I talk about a lot of different journaling practices. I am a total journal junkie. Uh, that's a significant theme in my book, I would say, is the power of journaling, how journaling has been so instrumental in my life, in my own mental, physical, and emotional health, and uh, many of the different journaling prompts uh, that I use, many of which I've just developed during my 10,000 hours of journaling habit. Um, so this is one of those practices. It's a variation of a practice that I talk about in the book called future tripping. So that practice you can do any time of year and when I do it, I pick a time in the future. It could be a year from now, 10 years from now. It could be next Saturday, any time in the future. And I write as if my ideal circumstances have already happened and they've come to pass. And I write with a big um, emphasis on emotion. So again, this is like straight out of Joe Dispenza becoming supernatural. He tells you to like meditate over these things. I'm all about making things somatic and kinesthetic and like I just, I love writing. I believe in the process of writing. I think everyone should journal. So when we do this and we're journaling in the beginning, it can be a little uncomfortable. It can be a little mechanical. Uh, it might sound something like this, like it's January 21st, 2025, and I'm so excited and grateful to be a best-selling author who has been able to help so many other people co-create their best possible timeline. I'm very excited to be uh, empowered by the income that that is generated and finally able to hire a Lyme specialist to start uh, addressing the roots of my infectious diseases that transform the trajectory of my life. So it's like emotion, situation, emotion, situation. That's kind of how I started it. But then I realized that I could invoke more of an emotional response when I didn't just use the emotional words, I'm excited, I'm grateful, but I let myself really fall into the yummy, 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 delicious, delicious situations that would evoke those positive emotions. So it started like that and what it looks like now for me that I've been doing this for so many years is more like um, I love working with Dr. Klinghart. He is so knowledgeable, and I have experienced leaps and bounds in my health, and I'm so, so excited that I don't need eating pills at all anymore, and I can just eat whatever I want, and that my menstrual cycles are completely regular, and that I now test negative for Lyme co-infections, uh, mycotoxins, all of it, and I have been cleared to have a baby, which is very, very exciting because me and my new delicious, yummy, superhuman husband are planning a family, and this is something that I didn't know if it was ever going to happen for me, and I'm just so excited and so grateful to be living this life and for that life to be fueled by and empowered by my art empowering others to go create their best possible timeline. It's just like icing on the cake. It's so yummy. It's so delicious. I fully understand now why life gave me such a challenging curriculum so that I could trans 
relationship goal material. It's just another level and you are able to do so much more and, and really sink into the depth of your potential because of him. And you do the same for him and it's absolutely beautiful because we don't have any more health problems. Something like that. I mean, uh, honestly, I suggest you spend at least 30 minutes writing this letter and uh, there's so many airplanes in this neighborhood. I hope this helps. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, you, if you need some prompts to help you get through this... Um, this letter, I'll just invite you to think about uh, what do you want? It's easy to say, what do you want this next year to be? And then it's so often, especially if you don't have like a journal junkie habit, to be like, oh, I don't know, and just get really overwhelmed by that uh, prompt. So as a seasoned journal junkie, let me give you a couple categories. And these are categories from the next practice. You can um, jot down and just have in front of you for when you write this practice. And those categories are like, what do you want your friend life to look like? What do you want from your relationships with your family over the next year? Uh, what, what about work? Um, are there any habits that you would like to stop? Things that you know aren't serving you anymore? Or are there any habits that you would like to uh, embody over the next year? Uh, are there any educational skills? How do you want to spend your leisure time? Where do you want to live? Is there anything you want to do with your home? Do you want to move? Do you want to get a new comfier bed or maybe just a pillow topper or some cute lights to like cute up your space a bit or do like a deep clean like anything with your home that you have goals for romance um health personal growth spirituality community purpose ideally what would that look like over the next year so there is that um and and that's really it you're gonna write that letter to your present self from your future self and again do whatever it takes for you to really sink into the feelings the positive emotions of what those situations would bring to your world um so i focused on my love life which I really want to meet my husband this year. At the tender age of 39, I am ready to not do everything alone all of the time. Um, yeah, before my ovaries freeze over so that I can satisfy my destiny of becoming a French grandmother. So, uh, yeah, please keep me in your prayers for that one. Um, and that, that is it about writing the letter to next year's you. Now we have the last practice, which I've gone over in a couple different ways here and on Patreon over the last few years. So my very first video ever, the audio is terrible, and it's just me reading this practice from the planner. Now, in addition to the planner, I go deeper into how I developed this practice and the impact and the manifestations that have sprung from it in the copy of my ebook, which is for sale on Patreon right now. If I remember, maybe I'll link that down below. Um, it's for sale on Patreon for $6, or if you join Patreon for $3, it's a free download. So the choice is yours. Um, and I go into like all of the planner practices in that book. It's an ebook, and in a couple months, we'll have an expanded version that's like deeply, deeply vulnerable and such a wealth of information. I call it an almanac of things I learned the hard way. So maybe you don't have to. It's literally everything that would have helped me to learn in my mental, physical, and emotional health journey. I think it's a wealth of information. I'm like wildly proud of it. I had no idea I could write something this good. And I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit of a picky bitch. So, um, I, I, for me to be proud of something, 
times. I hope I'm right. Anyway, uh, why am I going on a tangent about my book? Okay, so yeah, I have shared the page from the planner in my community section here on YouTube. So you can go check out my community section if you want to see it written out. It's also like a year, uh, maybe the same time, I posted that same page on my Patreon. It's easier to find on YouTube, honestly, because I don't post in the community section there that often. And on Patreon, you have to scroll through like a hundred posts to find it. Um, but I'm also just going to tell you all about it right now, so you don't need to go hunting for it. the text if... Uh, you are awake enough to absorb these ideas. Okay, so step one of the My Ideal Life practice that I do every New Year's, and that's what I'm working on here in this video, which was shot a couple weeks ago. Um, step one, and this is where I get the most resistance out of anything in the entire planner um, or book. I expect resistance to this, and I promise you that if you push through that resistance, almost everybody has that resistance, uh, at least in my world, which is not filled with fellow journal junkies. Um, if you push through it, all of the feedback that I've ever gotten about doing the practice has been universally positive. So, the first step where I expect you to resist is writing I want sentences for 30 minutes straight. I don't know why, I just stood up there and what I did off screen, I can't remember, this was shot a couple weeks ago. Uh, don't do that, just sit down and write for 30 minutes, although I think I might have been writing for 30 minutes at this point, and I think I ended up writing for like 40 minutes total, so I'm a good girl. Um, so yeah, you're just gonna write, I want, as fast as you can, whatever comes to mind, let your subconscious flow, get in that dreamlike state of reverie, where epiphanies are likely to bubble up from the subconscious into the conscious mind. Now, tense people are like, I feel good after 10 minutes or after 20 minutes. Push yourself to write for the full 30 minutes. A lot of times, some of the biggest epiphanies come in the last 10 minutes. In this video, I, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, I write for about 40 minutes. Um, so I really, really believe in writing. That's another thing that people don't want to do. They're like, what if I just voice record it? What if I just type it? No, none of that is writing. Uh, in the book and in the planner, I talk about the value of the kinesthetic and somatic experience of writing. So, first of all, um, people are like, writing is so slow, and 30 minutes is a long time, and it's like, yeah, that's the point. Um, you want to slow your mind down, just like the process of meditating. Writing forces you to quiet your mind and narrow your focus to the base of your hand. So I want you to slow your brain down, and I want you to experience a stillness that really isn't common or cultivated often by our culture. Um, so as your mind slows down, your thoughts become more clear and uh, what am I saying? Sorry, I'm like reading and talking at the same time. Uh, yeah, right, just write. Okay, just write the thing. Just this one time you want to do it your way, next time, fine. First time, do it my way. Um, and your wants should be realistic and absolutely absurd and fantastical. You want to be a unicorn, write that down. You want to be a mermaid, 
write that down. You want to live in a neighborhood where nobody ever drives by and there's zero airplanes ever. Write that down. Um, if your wants are not a mix of realistic and fantastical, then you might be doing it wrong. Like, don't overthink anything. Just write as much as you can, as fast as you can for at least 30 minutes, and that's what I'm doing in this video. That's step one of the last practice. Step two, that, okay, so I say that that is like only the creative part of you should be engaged in that part. Now, with the creative work done and your creative voice sort of aired, we invite the critic to come in and collaborate with the creative and we take our list of wants from the exercise above and we start to prioritize what we really want because a lot of times we have conflicting wants we can want and not want things at the same time and we can want two things that are totally like mutually exclusive so with a highlighter or pen we're going to circle or fully highlight the highest priority wants and then you can underline other things that you want but they're like not that important right and so the example that I always give for this is like uh, I don't know about you but I know a lot of people who have struggled with addiction in my life and part of them is like I want to fucking drink right now and then another part of them is like I really want to stop drinking because it's ruining my relationship with my wife and kids well which one do you want more and a lot of times we don't really sit and think of these dilemmas and we just sort of act on like impulses and what feels good and habits, right? And maybe those habits and those impulses aren't serving us. So participating in this exercise gives us a chance to go, huh, I want X and I want Y, but I can't have both of them. So in my ideal life, my best possible timeline, which one would I choose? And you're going to highlight or circle that one. And then once we have things sort of visually laid out for us there, we're going to reiterate those things that we've just circled or highlighted onto um, a, like a mind map, right? So one that comes in the planner it says my ideal life in the middle and then in the top left corner it says three months then in the top right corner it says one year then in the bottom right corner it says 10 years and then in the bottom left corner it says three years so we're gonna start plugging those things that we want into this timeline and you can change the numbers if you want um you know, maybe, maybe instead of 10 years, you want to think about five years or you want to think about 20 years. That's fine. Whatever serves you, uh, that, that is what you should be focusing on. So, um, you know, maybe in the next three months, I would like to manifest a quasi meaningful income. That would be great. And in the next year, I would like to have, uh, been working with a Lyme specialist because I am empowered by this meaningful income that I generate in the next three months. And maybe in one year, I am also engaged. And then maybe in three years, I'm married and I have babies. And then maybe in 10 years, I am healthy, married, I have babies, my business is blossoming, I'm giving lectures all over the world like my guru Ramdas about karma yoga and co-creating your best possible timeline, that sort of thing. And all of that can have a visual space and then you can take this page and you can stick it on your wall, you can stick it on your mirror, you can, um, you can just refer back to it in your planner. You can also create a, um, so I'm really, really, really big into sticky notes, right? And so you can, when I write, for example, I look like a 
crazy person. I put sticky notes all over the place. It's a practice that I got from a really, 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 really good book. What is that book called? It's called Story by Robert McKee, and they call it, like, the screenwriter's Bible. And he explains the importance of, like, defining uh, all of the, like, plot points of your story before you start writing so that you can make sure that every moment in your story serves the story well. What I love about studying art is that it so often is a mirror for life, right? So, like, what are the beats that you want to see in your life? Put them up in sticky note form and then have to break this down into two sections, right? So, one section will be like this mind map, right? And it's like in the next three months, in the next one year, in the next three years. I want this, I want that, I want that. And so the first section is like what you want. And then the next section is like, what did you achieve? So I talk about this in the book, but the first time I ever, ever, ever did this exercise when I developed it, I said I wanted to be friends with one of my favorite comedians of all time, Eddie Pepitone, in the next three years. Well, if Eddie didn't slide into my DMs that actual day and over the next three months become one of my best friends, I was um, dealing with a sick dog at the time and Eddie is a huge vegan. All of this is in the ebook and we really bonded and connected over that and he's one of my best friends to this day. So, I could have moved that from the, I want this in, I think it was three years back then, I want this in three years to, oh, I done did that. And then you have a fun visual of what you are after and what you've been able to achieve. So, those are my New Year's practices to help you co-create your best possible timeline. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you. I, um, I'm checking my dog's sugar in this video right now because that's my life and I'm a pancreas. Anyway, I love you so much. Happiest of New Year's and best of luck cultivating your best possible time.